This is an ABC News special report. I'm Whit Johnson in New York, and we're coming on the air because the Department of Justice has just released the redacted affidavit that the government used to justify its search of former President Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. Again, these documents just coming out. You can see right there on your screen many portions of this heavily redacted. But we are getting some revealing information. So let's bring in our chief Washington correspondent, Jonathan Carl, and our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Both of them will help break this all down. Pierre, let's start with you because you are getting some important information as it relates to probable cause. With the affidavit is heavily redacted. Large portions are blacked out to protect witnesses and where the investigation is headed. But a newly released document with the affidavit makes clear that the investigation is ongoing and active, noting that, that there are, quote, multiple civilian witnesses that need to be protected from intimidation or retaliation. But the main thing that the affidavit does is walk us through how this investigation unfolded. First, the National Archives in 2021 learned that there were a significant number of missing pre presidential records from the Trump administration. As a result of negotiations with President Trump, 15 boxes were sent from Mar-a-Lago to the National Archives in January of this year. What they found was deeply disturbing, highly classified materials. National Archives officials were so concerned that they turned over the boxes to the FBI this past May. We have a breakdown of what was in those boxes. There were 184 documents marked classified, among them 92 secret and 25 top secret. And there were other documents, apparently even more sensitive, including one that involved secrets designed to protect clandestine sources. Another highly classified document involved national defense. The affidavit makes clear that the FBI found probable cause to believe there were additional documents at Mar-a-Lago which potentially impacted national security. The affidavit also claims there was probable cause to believe there was evidence of obstruction of justice at Mar-a-Lago. Federal authorities believe they found the missing documents that they were looking for, and now they're urgently trying to protect these witnesses and the information. Whit? Pierre, thank you. And stand by for us as we uh, walk through this. Let's bring in John Carl, who obviously has been following this very closely. And, and John, we know the Trump team has suggested openly and publicly that they wanted this affidavit to be released, but they never actually made that case in court. Uh, the president, the former president, said he wanted the material released. His spokesperson reiterated uh, that that demand, but they were absolutely silent uh, in court on this. Uh, I, 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 you know, when you look at this information, even as heavily redacted as it is, uh, it is damaging. I would argue uh, uh, to uh, to the former president. You see uh, that there is uh, that the FBI saw that he had removed considerable amounts of. Uh, documents marked classified uh and, and this they, they knew this well before the the search of mar-a-lago this was in the 15 boxes that pierre just mentioned had been turned over uh, after a lengthy negotiation that ran most of last year uh, to the national archives uh and that they uh that the justice department is outlining what they believe are evidence of crimes and 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 by the way one thing that's addressed although in a heavily redacted way is the argument uh, that has been made uh, by those close to uh, Donald Trump that he had uh, somehow uh, declassified all this material uh, and therefore there was nothing nothing at issue here. Uh, that argument is mentioned and then the the response to that argument, much of it is blacked out. But what is pointed out here um, is the concern uh, that the material uh, was was placed at Mar-a-Lago in a way that was not secure. And it goes through in some detail uh, the, the the strict laws. I, I know what you're familiar with uh, with the way classified material is 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 must be viewed. Uh, there are you know it has to be done in a secure location. Uh, in fact, while Donald Trump was president, there was a a setup spe uh, set up at uh, Mar-a-Lago called a skiff, uh, which would ensure that material could be viewed and discussed in a way that couldn't be penetrated by people trying to eavesdrop. Well, none of that. Uh, exists anymore uh, at Mar-a-Lago, and the concern is uh, that this was that this material, highly sensitive material, was uh, was stored in a in an improper way at Mar-a-Lago, where not only Donald Trump would have access to it, uh, but potentially many other people. And I think the other thing that's worth uh, pointing out here is, while 
this search of Mar-a-Lago may have come as a shock to so many Americans. This was a process of back and forth between Trump's team and the National Archives and the DOJ that lasted more than a year. In fact, I think it's worth going to some of the timeline here because the National Archives had pursued these documents for months, as we pointed out. And earlier, as Pierre mentioned in his reporting, in June, the FBI visited Mar-a-Lago and an attorney for former President Trump claimed that all the classified material had been returned. But then again, on August 8th, when the FBI arrived with that search warrant, they found documents classified secret and top secret. And again, that's what is being revealed here in this uh, unsealed affidavit, uh, including some of the highest uh, documents with some of the highest levels of classification. So let's go ahead and bring in now Mary McCord. She's the former DOJ head of National Security Division, now a professor at Georgetown University. Uh, Mary, thanks so much for being with us. And you, of course, were in charge of the division that is doing this search here. So you have some special insight. And I wonder, from your take on all of this, we've heard about the probable cause and the possibility of obstruction. What stands out to you as far as possible crimes that may have been committed? Well, you know, we've had only a few minutes, of course, to skim over the affidavit, but I do think it's significant that this isn't all just about the mishandling of and retention of classified documents or documents that are national defense information. I mean, that's one of the of the crimes for which the uh, warrant sought evidence, right? There were probable cause established in this affidavit that evidence of three different crimes would be would would likely to be found at Mar-a-Lago. One of those involves the unlawful retention of classified information or the mishandling of it or transmission transmitting it to others. And this um, affidavit, unlike the warrant uh, cover sheet that we saw a week ago or so ago, actually specifies the subsection of the law 793E, which is about that unlawful transmission or retention of national defense information. But notably, the other two crimes that are mentioned are one is an obstruction offense and one is a uh, an unlawful taking of presidential records which don't have to be classified at all and the obstruction offense i do think it's notable that at paragraphs 52 and 53 of the affidavit which are partly unredacted, there is reference to this letter, which is attached in full to the affidavit, a letter from the former president um, to the Department of Justice, uh, making arguments that the president has authority to declassify anything, that the laws about mishandling classified, inform classified information don't apply to him, and that um, DOJ has a duty of candor to share that information with any court that would be considering any type of warrant or any type of uh, legal process. And so that in, that makes me wonder a little bit if there is uh, some concern that those arguments being made back in May were also potentially part of an obstruction effort. Mary, thank you again for your time today. You know, this has been a fast moving process. It was just yesterday, a, a few hours after the DOJ submitted its proposed redactions that the judge appeared to be satisfied with it and then ordered that that redacted version of the affidavit re be released a day later. So that's what we're looking at again right there on your screen. 38 pages. You can see just how much of it is blacked out, but that's for specific reasons that are laid out here to protect witnesses, uh, grand juries, sources and methods things that could compromise the progress of the investigation. I want to bring in one of our legal contributors here at ABC News, Brian Buckmeyer, who's been following this very closely. And Brian, walk us through what happens next, because we know that the Trump team has also requested something called a special master. Uh, and just wondering how this all plays out moving forward. So the next steps are for the Trump team to look at what is and what isn't in this, this uh, memorandum affidavit that we're looking at. Now, for most of you looking at it, you think, well, the middle of it is basically blacked out, but the beginning and end has some information, but the end is actually an attachment, a letter from the Trump team uh, to that of the DOJ. And the beginning is just a lot of case law. Uh, so there's not a lot here when you think about what did or didn't happen. What the Trump team is gonna do is take this and try to pry open as much information as possible. They can either ask, as they've done, to have a, a master look at it, separate from that of the judge who issued the warrant, or they can ask for an attorney's eyes only, where they can maybe look at it, promise not to send it out to anyone else or even to their own client, and try to make the arguments that are appropriate. Because the next steps that may happen would be an arrest and an indictment if the DOJ feels that they can prove these charges beyond a reasonable doubt. 
All right, thank you. I want to bring back our uh, Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, because you've been covering the Justice Department for two decades, really. And you pointed out in an internal email to us, and forgive me as I'm sharing it publicly here, but you never in the time of your entire career have really seen something like this where they release this much information so quickly. Why is this such an unprecedented case? Well, clearly because it involves a former president of the United States. The Justice Department was under enormous pressure to give some sense of why they raided the president's resort. They knew they had to give additional information. You saw the judge, the magistrate in this case, realized that it was such a significant case that more information had to be released. Now, the one thing that really strikes me about this the most, Whit, is the notion that the Justice Department is really emphasized that they have cooperating witnesses, civilian witnesses that are helping with this investigation. They are making that very clear in this document. It's very unusual for them to, to make such a broad statement. And also the fact that they're stating flatly that they believe that these witnesses could be subject to retaliation and also intimidation. Very concerning by the Justice Department. And I'm being told that they have to find out how was this material protected while it was at Mar-a-Lago all those many months? Who might have had access to it? That is a critical, critical question because they remind me that some of this information is among the most sensitive secrets that the government has. Yeah, because even if authorities have recovered this information, who knows where it's been and, and, and who may have seen it. Uh, Pierre, thank you. Let's bring in Brad Garrett. He's an ABC News contributor and uh, a former agent with the FBI. Brad, I want to ask you specifically where this investigation goes from here now that some of this information has been revealed. So keep in mind with that all of the information that's blacked out are investigative techniques. They're name, references to individuals. To move this case forward, you have to go back to what they had even before they went to Mar-a-Lago. And the, the reality is there is a lot, apparently, a lot of evidence to support uh, many of the allegations that uh, you've had attorneys talk about today. So the FBI will continue to do what it always does, is put this puzzle together. They'll look at wiretaps, they'll look at other witnesses, they'll look at movement of documents, they'll look at CCTV, like you do in any other case, obviously with a lot of scrutiny. But all I'm suggesting is this case was much further down the road, I believe, than many of the cases I've worked on in the past because of this, the special circumstances, obviously a former president. That's not gonna though, slow DOJ down and the FBI in moving forward. Brad Garrett, thank you. Let's bring back Mary McCord. And Mary, I know that you've been taking a few minutes here to kind of pour over some of these other pages here. Do you get any indication that the Justice Department plans to file charges anytime soon? Well, I think that um, to answer that, we have to also look at the redacted motion to keep certain portions under seal that, that was also just released today. And that makes it very clear that the investigation is very much ongoing, right? That there are witnesses whose identity needs to be protected. There's ongoing investiga investigative steps that the, that the DOJ points out if they were revealed in the affidavit could lead to someone being able to obstruct the investigation, right? And then, of course, there were the, the 60 grand jury material that's redacted, law enforcement identifications to protect law enforcement officers, and third-party confidential information. So all of that shows, and, and the vast amount, number of redactions shows this is very much an ongoing investigation. There are still investigators investigative steps to take. And so I don't think we should be expecting anything imminently in terms of charges. I mean, remember, they gathered lots of boxes. They've got to go through them. They've got to uh, really assess in, in great detail. And that is potentially being held up by this separate motion that Trump has filed for a special master. So I, I do, uh, you know, I agree with the FBI agent, former FBI agent you just had on that they would have been fairly far along before they took such an overt step. But I don't think they're there yet. I think there's more work to be done. Mary, thank you. Let's bring back John Carl because I want to I want to get back inside what's going on at Mar-a-Lago. What are you learning about how the Trump team plans to respond? There have been some reports, some questions about whether there could even be a shakeup within the legal team. You know, the, the the bottom line is that the former president has a legal team that is that is short on experience. He's been trying to get 
uh, 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 somebody to take on this case uh, for some time. He's been turned down. I know of personally uh, uh, more than one uh, a, a, a high profile attorney who has worked with him in the past, uh, declined to take this case on now. But the big picture here is when, when you look, even as heavily redacted as this is, uh, when, when, when you read in, in black and white uh, this, this affidavit saying uh, that the search of the premises uh, is justified uh, because, quote, probable cause exists to believe that evidence, contraband, fruits of a crime, or other illegally possessed, uh, other items illegally possessed in violation of the law. I mean, that, it's clear that there is a, a substantial criminal investigation underway here. The, the other thing that, that really stands out to me is uh, how long the effort was underway to get the material back. Uh, we, we see here that the National Archives began its effort to get material back from Donald Trump in May of last year. And it wasn't until January that those uh, fi initial 15 boxes uh, were, were returned. And we see how much classified information was in those boxes. I mean, Pierre went through the numbers. Uh, and and that's that's well before we get to the search you know, this latest search of Mar-a-Lago, where uh, there was even more highly classified information, and it seems it seems quite haphazard. There's there's reference in here uh, to newspaper clippings, handwritten notes, uh, and, and and other such items amidst this class the, the, the classified uh, documents. Uh, so, you know, what's the Trump team uh, thinking in Mar-a-Lago? Uh, well, I, I I would imagine after looking at this uh, this affidavit that the effort to get a serious, experienced criminal defense uh, legal team in place is, is more urgent than it has ever been for Donald Trump. Yeah, to your point there, John, right there on page eight, it talks about how highly classified records were unfolded, intermixed with other records and otherwise improperly identified. John Carl, Pierre Thomas, our thanks to our entire team here. Our coverage does continue on ABC News Live and ABCnews.com. You can also get breaking news alerts on the ABC News app. I'll be back here tonight with the entire team for World News Tonight. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a great day. This has been a special report from ABC News.